Thursday, February 17th, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Uh, today, we're going to look at gold and what gold really is and how it acts. Uh, and it's a interesting day to look at it because it's confirming that it's going to act as um, a, a rebalancer of the whole uh, world monetary system. We are breaking out this morning. Uh, we've been up to 1891. So we're going to touch up on a pocketbook of gold, uh, which was written by Jim Sinclair years ago and uh, Peter Carlin. And we're going to look at Turkey, <laughs> uh, what's happening there in terms of uh, the currency and gold. So before I do that, I'd like to thank all the viewers, all the subscribers for their support, for their interest in my channel. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And if you do want to help the channel, uh, there are some ways to help in the description box below, like through PayPal, Patreon. And uh, if you're in the UK or in Europe, uh, I provide some promo codes and referral codes for gold investments and also for glint uh, even though i recommend people do do their uh, shopping around when uh, buying bullion to get the best deal but also at the same time get it from a reputable dealer and that's why i recommend gold investments so yes it, it's been uh, an interesting week we saw gold made a new high, eight-month high, a few days ago at um, 1880. And that high actually wasn't really too encouraging because the previous high had been around uh, 1875, 1877. And when you want to see a breakout, you want to see uh, whatever it is, whatever asset it is, go through that price comfortably. And then we had a a pullback back to around 1840 or thereabouts and uh, but gold uh, picked up right away yesterday and it's continued uh, this morning so the technical picture looks good uh, and uh, I reiterate that over the long term we shouldn't worry uh, about these moves uh, but the only reason I'm talking about about it is because I know how it feels because I, I've been uh, in the gold market for 20 years and uh, there's always the naysayers. Uh, I remember when gold was trying to break, break through 400 back in 2004. Uh, people are saying, well, gold is finished. Uh, gold is going to go back to $250. And we're hearing the same thing uh, today. And, and that's why these breakouts uh, they're important over the long term, and I think this is a uh, confirmation of it. So we're making uh, an eight-month high. Uh, we're very near uh, 1900. Uh, but before we look at the technical picture, uh, let me talk about what gold really is, and then uh, a little bit about Turkey. So let's go to uh, page 50 and see what uh, Jim Sinclair says about gold. Chapter 2, what is gold? Not surprisingly, when discussing an emotional subject like gold, there is a widespread disagreement about what exactly gold is. Many call gold a commodity and look towards its relationship with other precious metals like silver, platinum, and palladium to assess fundamentals and anticipate price action. Market analysts have also long depicted a symbiotic relationship between gold and crude oil, seeing them as closely aligned barometers of inflation that should roughly move up and down together. The quest to explain gold's supply and demand fundamentals leads some analysts to write at length on topics range from, ranging from jewelry demand in India and gold use in computers to lengthy tombs on the production potential of various geographical regions and specific mines. Some follow gold's price movements as measured against non-ferrous 
ferrous industrial metals like copper and zinc, while others even profess price relationships with agricultural commodities. While some of these relationships have elements of legitimacy, they miss the overriding truth about gold. Gold is a currency. It is, a, it is as simple as that. Gold is a monetary form of exchange and is not a commodity. Gold is the ultimate, albeit rarely used, form of payment. Hence, uh, the end use of gold is largely storage, not consumption. Through hoarding, to maintain a physical measurement of globally accepted value, the utility of that ability to retain value is that gold has, throughout history, successfully ensured against political, military, economic, and economic contingencies. History, that ultimate arbiter of truth, speaks this loudly and clearly. Gold has operated as a monetary medium of exchange for well over 2,000 years and arguably for as long as 5,000 years. In short, gold has outlasted every empire, nation state, and corporation, as well as most religions. Gold's function throughout history has been to measure and preserve wealth and status and to store value. That is why gold is always called on to reveal its historical role as a currency at times of crisis. I'm going to stop at that. <laughs> I, I highly recommend this book. I've recommended it before. It's not easy to find. You might want to check out at uh, jsmindset.com, which is Jim Sinclair's blog, to see if he has any left. If not, you're going to have to look for it online. A Pocketbook of Gold, A Survival Manual for Monetary Mayhem. So a must have if you are into sound money, into gold or what people call a gold bug. Uh, that's another uh, subject that uh, is interesting because am I a gold bug because I like gold? <laughs> the, the metal itself. Partly, I would say, because it's beautiful metal. <laughs> it's a luxury item. Like Alan Greenspan said, that money has to be a luxury item that uh, is uh, rare and valuable. But also because historically, it, it's been the ultimate uh, arbiter of wealth, as Jim Sinclair said. And now we come to Turkey. So what's happening in Turkey? Well, their currency uh, was on the way out <laughs> uh, around November, December time last year. Uh, the Turkish lira was collapsing versus the, the dollar, the paper dollar. And uh, the Turkish government, uh, under the leadership of President Erdogan, instituted a kind of a put option on the currency. And promised uh, savers that uh, he would compensate them with a high interest and also with uh, a clause that would make them whole if the currency devalued against the dollar. So it's kind of uh, stabilized the currency for now, as you can see here by this chart. But as Jim Sinclair said, uh, gold is the ultimate form of payment worldwide amongst nations. And, and I think Charles de Gaulle said that as well. <laughs> uh, he, I, I'm paraphrasing him. He said it's uh, the ultimate form of payment par excellence. Uh, that was the, the former president of France. And uh, so I know Turkey also sold some of its gold reserves uh, if, uh, government held gold reserves last year to try to defend the currency. Uh, but now they're probably trying to keep a hold of that gold. But the Turkish people, for example, hold, I think, $250 billion worth of gold. That's what this FT article said, which is a lot. So the Turkish people uh, have never really had confidence in the lira, the paper lira. So they hold that gold. Uh, but uh, the government now is pushing them to 
sell their gold to re so they can uh, so the government can replenish the country's gold reserves because that's the only way really uh, internationally that the lira can be seen as a good currency but i don't really think the turkish people maybe some will but the majority uh, i don't think they'll buy into it even if um, the government there promises them 30 percent interest rate uh, and, and why why wouldn't they why wouldn't they exchange their gold for the lira and get a 30 percent interest rate well on a deposit well because we don't really know what inflation is there uh, the government lies about it and i think offering that kind of interest rate 30 percent shows desperation so I think this uh, plan to try to get people to sell their gold, it looks like uh, the Turkish government is working with bullion dealers to, to make it easier for people to sell. Uh, I, I think it's going to be very unsuccessful. The only way they have, of course, uh, if they really want that gold badly, the government is to do what FDR did in 1933, and that's steal it from the public or... <laughs> Put it more, uh, putting it more uh, euphemistically, uh, confiscated legally, right? Um, but uh, I'm not sure if that would succeed in Turkey. Um, I don't think the people uh, in Turkey would accept that. So there you go. Uh, things are getting very interesting. What, what I think uh, is happening, yes, the general commodities are continuing to go up. Uh, we've seen that aluminium or aluminum is in uh, backwardation. Uh, prices are going through the roof. It's the highest price in uh, alum aluminum since 1988. Uh, we've had lumber as well last year. Lumber is coming back. We, we've got wheat. E everything is pointing to a total rebalancing uh, of the system because the system has gone like this. This is paper assets over here. And these are real things. And we need to rebalance. That's what happens in a um, uh, uh, market reset, market uh, instituted reset, not a, an official reset like Roosevelt did in 34 from $20.67 uh, to 35 for the ounce of gold. This will be done through the markets. Uh, in my opinion, and gold will be the ultimate uh, rebalancer of everything. As Jim Sinclair said, it's the ultimate uh, revealer of wealth. That's another thing he says in, in this book. So with that, let's quickly look at where we are right now uh, this morning. It's just before 9 a.m. London time. So yes, spot gold is up $16. Uh, we are at 1886. The overnight high has been 1891 and the low has been 1867. Uh, so we're up just under 1%. Uh, silver is up 14 cents or uh, just under two thirds of a percent. So yeah, silver is lagging behind. <laughs> we want to see silver catch up, but who knows? Maybe gold is going to lead the way and, and, and eventually silver will outperform. Uh, but right now, gold is leading the way. Uh, so silver's at 23.72. Uh, high's been 78. Low, low has been 41. And I think on Tuesday, the high was 24 for silver. So that's the key level there. Uh, the Dow future is down half a percent or 180 points. Uh, the NASDAQ is down 93 or two thirds of a percent. S&P 500 is down uh, 24 points or half a percent. Uh, the FTSE 100 index is down 26 at 75.66. To the uh, fiat currencies, sterling is unchanged versus the dollar, 135.83. Uh, the euro is down slightly, about an eighth of a percent, 113.56. Uh, it in, interesting because the, the dollar is weaker versus the, those currencies, but gold is doing well. But the dollar is very weak versus the yen, actually. We're down almost uh, 0.4 of a percent at 115.07. Dollars unchanged versus the, the yuan, 633.16.
Aussie dollar is unchanged, 71.94. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the Canadian dollar, 127.08. And the Kiwi dollar is up a third of a percent at uh, 67. So when I quote the Kiwi dollar, I quote it in terms of US dollars. So when I say the Kiwi dollar is at 67, it means that one Kiwi dollar buys 67 US cents. And I'm saying this because I, I, I uh, saw a comment yesterday saying how can the uh, Kiwi dollar be worth more than the Aussie dollar? But uh, if you look at the Aussie dollar, I'm quoting it uh, in terms of the Aussie dollar as well. So one Aussie dollar is buying uh, almost 72 US cents. So it buys more US cents than the Kiwi dollar. Anyway, uh, to the general commodities, uh, we've seen a, a big move lower in crude oil to do with a statement by the Iranian government uh, about uh, a deal, nuclear deal. Uh, nuclear weapon deals or a nuclear energy deal. And, and uh, yeah, we we dropped quite a bit in WTI. I think we were around, uh, let's see, yesterday, uh, we made a new uh, multi-year high around 94, just just above 93 or below 94. And uh, and then we, we saw crude oil drop uh, quite a bit overnight. Uh, right now, it's down 1.3%. Uh, and it's been as low as 88.24, so very volatile. But right now we're at 90.70. Uh, as I said, uh, commodities are going to be volatile, but uh, the trend is higher. Always that rebalancing. Commodities uh, still need a lot of rebalancing higher versus paper assets, and that's going to continue. Uh, High-grade copper is down two-thirds of a percent at 451, and U.S. nat gas is at 455. That's down uh, just over one and a half percent. We're going to finish off with the 10-year uh, yield as usual. 10-year uh, yield is down about four basis points at two percent exactly. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.